Number 45. Using the symmetry of the arrangement, determine the direction of the force on Q in the figure below, given that QA is equal to QB is positive 7.5 microcoulombs, and this is this. Okay, so, um, and also it says Q. Well, actually, we got to know what Q is, right? So Q is 2 times uh, 2 microcoulombs, and it's positive. So watch this. I'm going to plug in a positive here for Q. We know that QA and QB, as they told us, is also positive, so let's plug in positives there. And we also know that QC and QD are going to be negative. So whenever we have a problem like this, I know this looks scary, but remember, deal with one force at a time, one pair at a time. All right, so the force here between QA and Q is going to be, is going to look in what direction? Well, they're repulsive forces, right? So the force on Q, because that's the uh, charge we're interested in calculating the force on, it's going to be a vector pointing this way, right? I'll call this the F, the force of A on Q. How about then this guy? Same thing. It's repulsive, both positive, so they're going to repel. So this is going to be pointing this way now, right? Great. I'll call that FB. Okay. How about now the Cs? Well, there's only one C. How about QC? Well, this is negative. That's positive, and they're attracted, right? So therefore, there's a force vector pointing this way. Huh. Look at that. Same thing. I would overlay it, but we're going to lose the detail. So I'm putting it all just off center, but it should be right on, right? The same same direction, basically. All right. And also, you might say, well, how did you uh, how did you kind of know that? I guess you know, I reading ahead actually. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm just I'm looking back, and I'm like, how do I know that this is symmetrical? Um, it it's a square. All right. So it's ten meters on both sides. And um, we'll assume, then you might say, well, is this 10 centimeters? You know, where, let's assume, I don't know what they're doing. You know, the, let's just assume that the square is this, right? From the center to center, basically, of these charges, okay? That's the, that's the square. Um, so, and now, uh, we also have the same thing here. Here's a negative, right? Here is a positive, so it's the same thing. It's going to be pointing in that direction. So, basically, all we got to really do here, you know, D... Now, they're talking about the symmetry. Pretend that you had these four forces pulling on this particular charge. Right? Or pushing it. It doesn't matter. Where is the charge going to move? It's going to move down. Directly down. Why directly down? Well, because if you notice, right, whatever X components these are pulling with are the same as these X components. So their X is going to cancel, right? And what won't cancel, though, are the Y components. So basically, all I really have to do here, since this is a cube, I know all these distances are equivalent, I really only have to find the x component of one of these things, and then just kind of multiply it by 4. That's kind of what they're meaning, I believe, by using the symmetry. So why don't I do this just for qa here, this particular distance? So I'll call this for now uh, x. Remember, this is a square, and they said it's going to be 10 centimeters on both sides, or 0.1 meters, all right? on both sides okay so what i could do uh, you know there's a couple of ways i can i can look at this um why don't i just break this up into a small triangle right halfway basically this little triangle here i know this length what is that length going to be what's well, going to be half of the total right so it's going to be 0 0.05 and then how about this well it's going to be half of the total so 0 0.05 again I'm not sure if my accent is coming across as I started watching. <laughs> I started watching um, uh, House of Cards and uh, feel like I'm Frank Underwood. Anyway, I, I know it's pretty sad. Okay, so um, well, how do we find X here? Right, It's a right triangle. This is the hypotenuse, so you know it's just Pythagorean theorem. It's going to be 0 0.05 squared plus 0 0.05 squared is going to be equal to C squared. You now square root both sides and bada bing, bada boom, there you go. All right, so square root of 0 0.05 squared plus point, 0 0.05 squared. So we know that that's going to be 0 0.0707 blah, 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 blah meters. Okay, so now this is the distance. Okay, that's the R. Maybe I should have called it R. All right, um, now what do I need to do? <clears throat> so why don't we find the force? All right, so why don't we find that force now? So we're going to have force is equal to k, q1 times q2, all over the distance between them squared. So k is a constant, 8 times 10 to the, uh, 8.99, right? 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, times q1. So we'll call that qa, right? That's going to be 7.5 microcoulombs. So that's 7.5 times 10 to the minus 6th, times then the 
Q value is 2 times 10 to the minus 6. We need those in coulombs. And then divide that whole thing by now the distance between them. That's what we just found, squared. So 0 0.0707 squared. Let's find the force. Now, all right, so what do we got here? So uh, let's do 8.99 times 10 to the 9th multiplied by then 7.5 times 10 to the minus 6th times 2 times 10 to the minus 6th. Divide that all by now, that value squared. All right, so here I get about 26.97 or so, 26.97. And this is going to be in terms of uh, Newtons. Now, this represents Fa, as I mentioned. That's what I was calculating, right? So in my diagram, where's Fa? Well, here it is. Fa is right here. So this force that I just calculated is this vector, okay? It's the red one. But now what I want to do is I want to find the y component of that, right? So if I were to dot like a little triangle here, because remember, all the x's will cancel, so I want to find that little y dash component. How do I do that? Well, you got to know some of the, you know, an angle in here. Well, what do you think that angle is? It's a square, remember. If this whole thing is a square, what, and I draw some vector straight down, you know that this whole thing is 90, right in here? That whole thing is 90? So this piece in here is going to be 45. All right? <coughs> so this is going to be a 45 degree angle. All right, great. So now what I can do is find, if this is the hypotenuse, right, and I want to find the y value, right, the, I got to be using, in this particular picture, because I'm using this angle, it's cosine. I know you might think it's sine, but it's cosine. But guess what? At the end of the day, they're both 45, so cosine and sine doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer. All right. Uh, so we know that the force here for A in the y direction will be equal to 26.97 uh, times then the cosine, just because of my pick. You can use sine. That's okay. But because of my picture, it's a cosine value. All right, so this is going to be Fa in the y direction, and that's just now one of them. So multiplied by the cosine of 45, and we get about 19.07, 19.07. Now remember uh, that this is only one of them, okay? But all four of them will have the same y components pointing in the same exact direction. So we're going to take this bad boy, multiply it by four, and now we're going to find the total force, right? So take, take that, multiply it by four, and what do we get? 76.3. So 76.3 newtons, all right? And that is the total force, all right? Uh, yeah, there you go. All right, guys. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Take care.